Hello everybody, it's Paul here, it's August 9th, August 9th, <laughs> well you know, it all just blends in right, it's September 9th, 2021, and um, <laughs> I, um, you know, I t today uh, at exactly 7pm I released the documentary, um, and uh, Boy, I tell you, I, I watched it tonight over on my on my uh, my big screen movie screen thingy that I have down here, and and uh, it got me to my knees. I went upstairs and got on my knees, and I just cried out to God, like you know, the hour's so late, guys. The hour is so late. There's not much time, guys. I'm telling you. And I said, Lord, renew my, my faith. Renew my heart. Shake the weariness off me, Lord. Folks, you know, if you ever were, I wasn't a track track guy. I didn't like to, I didn't like track. But if you, were, you know, that last stretch, right? We're coming down that last stretch, that last leg. And uh, just crying out to God. Oh, Lord, just... Keep me true, the temptations, the snares that are can try to knock on our doors. Um, God sanctify us, take those those things in our, in our our that we're battling with by the blood of Christ. Just shake it out of us, Lord. I got a message coming after this one, and uh, and we're gonna be talking about the blood of Jesus Christ, but we're going to dig deep into, because you know, this ministry goes deep into the Word of God, into the mind of God, but uh, I had a dream, and I'll share, I'll go ahead and share the dream with you all, and then, and then uh, but there's a message that I, I will be digging into next, there's no great, I get no greater joy than to preach about the cross, and to talk about my Lord Jesus Christ, but and there's a song called There's Power in the Blood. And that's a song, and a lot of churches just sing it with lip service. They don't truly, they're not under a truly anointed preaching that's preaching what the, what the power of the blood is and what it does. But I had a dream last night. Um, and, uh, well, would have been, yeah, well... Yeah, yesterday, um, and in the dream, there's a, there's, a, there's a scriptures in the Bible in the book of Acts where the apostle Paul is is on a on the they're taking a boat um, to a, to a, a top of my head. I don't remember exactly the city where they're going, but there's a storm that comes, and the the angel of the Lord appears to the apostle Paul on that boat. And he tells Paul to tell every man on this boat to, to, to rest assured, no, no life will be lost, you know. And, uh, and, and, and you know, and God looked over those, and, and obviously there was a, there was a shipwreck and, and so forth. Um, I hate to tell stories I don't have in front of me because I always worry about quoting something wrong. I'm always real, that's a, one of my uh, OCDs or whatever, but uh, I take this so important to me, but I, I just know it was somewhere in Acts 20, um, I want to make sure I don't, uh, I think it's maybe 20 or 21, um, but basically, um, the storm, yeah, here it's in Acts 27, and, um, you know, this is when Paul was being sent to Rome, and that's where we're heading, we're, we're heading to Rome, you know, we talk about that final showdown that we're heading into. And uh, I just said tonight, you know, no, no, shake the weariness off me, Lord. Let me not think about Rome. Let me not see, let me not think about what I'm coming against, but what, let me think about who's with me. Let me, let me, let me be focused that there's the angel of the Lord next to me, right? Let me get focused on the, on the God who I serve. Let me get folks focused on the revelation that he's given me in my heart. 
Let me be focused on that there's a fourth man in the fiery furnace, right, who pushed back the flames when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in the furnace, right? Let us our focus be on that. Then it shakes the weariness off us, I'm telling you. So I'm asking God tonight, if I focus on Rome or the, all the other agendas and all the other things going on around me in the political realms and the religious realms and all these different that, that pull together to make up the pale horse rider, you're going to get weary. We're going to get weary, but Lord, help us to just focus on the one who's on the boat, the one who's with us, the one who's walking with us. And I did push record, making sure. Now, so just looking at this story of, you know, um, not long after there arose against it a tremendous, let me find the part here real quick here. Um, he says here, he says uh, in verse um Verse 9, now when, when much time was spent and when sailing was now with dangerous because the fast was now already past, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage. You know, folks, I, I perceive that there's, there's hurt and much damage. We, 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 we are facing that that's we can't we we can't tell you anything but the truth. These churches that they're not preaching you the truth of what's going on and warning you. They're false. They're they're liars, because they're so worried about their bank account. We oh, I hit on this a million times, but they're so worried about their agenda. They're so worried about filling up their pews. They're so worried. They're so worried about the wrong things, the the, the wrong narrative. But the true ministry is telling you know what you know what. Sirs, I perceive it in this, in this voyage we're in. We'll be with hurt and much damage. Not only of the landing in the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. <laughs> oh, they don't listen to the Apostle Paul. They, they don't listen to him. They don't listen to the ones who just speak direct the truth, even if it cuts you, even if it puts fear in you, even if it's telling you what's coming, and it's because it, that's the that's the love of God. And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain. I'm gonna drop down here. Now. Then all of a sudden a storm comes, folks. There's a storm happens while they're on this boat. And um, you know, you go through verse 14 through 20. But in verse 21, but after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loose from Crete. And to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's lives among you but of the ship. Oh, the ship's going down. The ship's going down, bride. But you, there will be no life lost, he says. Amen. For there stood by me this night. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, the angel, the angel, hallelujah, the angel of God, hallelujah, whose I am and whom I serve. Oh, praise God. Amen. Saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Amen. We must listen to the voice of God. We must keep our eyes on Christ. We must keep our eyes on Him, trusting in Him. Now, I had this dream yesterday. And in this dream, I'm on a ship. And there are those on the ship that keep saying, Leviticus. Ah, Leviticus. Leviticus. The book of Leviticus. They keep throwing, they just keep screaming. Them. You can feel it in the background. And, and, and the waves are just, they're hitting the ship. And this ship, it's just like it's, it's like it's going to go down. And all of a sudden, I start preaching to those, everybody on the ship, the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. 
And that whole everything changed. The whole dynamics of everything in that ship, everything changed, amen. It looked like everything was going under, but the blood of Jesus Christ made the difference. Now, that's another message. You got a preview. I want to spend time because, folks, there are so many churches who quote unquote preach the cross, right? Preach the blood of Jesus Christ, right? But they don't preach it in the power and the demonstration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't preach, they don't, they don't break down. This I always call this is a bloody gospel. Genesis or Revelation. And I want to dig and I want to study by the help of God to bring out the fullness of the blood of Christ and what it means. Because life, folks, life is in the blood. Anybody, you understand science, you understand, you got simple education, you understand life is in the blood. The life of Christ, the Holy Ghost is in the blood. I'm preaching a bloody gospel that, that, that points people to the word and gets the life, which is the life of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost in you. Trust me. No, no, no lives will be lost on this ship of the bloody gospel of Jesus Christ in which God has put in my soul to preach. Amen. Hallelujah. That angel of the Lord stands right next to me. Amen. Praise be to God giving that same message. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, Lord, I bless you. I praise you, Lord. Amen. Oh, Lord. Now, Lord, help me. Help me to preach this message, Lord. Help me to get myself out of the way. I don't want, I want to make sure before this message is titled the Trump deception. I don't want anybody to, to I'm, you know, there's a terminology called the Antichrist, right? I'm not, I'm not putting that title on Donald Trump as the Antichrist. Amen. But I want to show you where he fits. I want to show you has God begin to deal with me. And when I get done preaching this, if you can't see what Trump is, then you, you, you're, you're as blind as a bat. Because you don't want to see what it is. You don't want to see what's going on. Amen? Now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. <laughs> I thank you, Father, that help us, Lord. You, we, we get weary when we're looking at Rome. When we're looking at what the beast ahead of that we're, that we're coming against, Lord. But when we look at the angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is on the ship. And he's, and he's saying, every, all those who follow his word, all those who, who, who feed upon this bloody gospel and receive the life that's in the blood, which is the Holy Spirit sealed unto the day of redemption. Little bride, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to be afraid of. Keep your eyes on me. I'm with you. I'm with you, Paul. I'm with you. All those who follow this ministry, may God work in your life. You know, I, I want to mention Tamika. I know you've been under a battle lately. And I see your text messages. I've been wanting to call you, and I'm going to. But sister, God is with you. You keep claiming God's the blood of God, Christ over your home, over your children. Keep loving him and staying with him and put your everything you have. Make it the make him the love of your heart, your life. No man on this earth will ever give you the love that Jesus Christ gives. Just keep running to him and let him fill you with his Holy Spirit. And God protect you and your children. And look over them. Lord, I want to say thank you. I had a beautiful, beautiful conversation the other day with, with Sister Trish and John. It was uh it meant a lot to me, and it was a joy to be able to share the word with them, talk about life and the, the, the word and the ministry of Brother Branham and just the different things and to be able to pray together, Lord. I just thank you. Continue to just work in their family. Continue to work with, with through Chelsea. And, and, Lord, I pray for Lane. Lord, you know, in the eyes of men, he's a, he's a big-time football star, guard, offensive tackle highest paid lineman in the NFL, Lord, that means nothing. 
Your word says it's hard for the rich man to go through the eye of a needle. But Lord, it's amazing grace. I look at the Apostle Paul. That man was a murderer. That man was, an, was the most intelligent of his time, highly educated. And you called that man and saved him from that life and made him one of the greatest apostles for your kingdom. So I pray for Lane. Lord Jesus, there's brokenness in the, in the man's life. There's, there's things that are going on there, Lord, that only you know. And Satan, we will bind you in Jesus Christ's name. I pray you'll, you, you work in his life. You'll bring him to you. You'll bring him to, to a place of, of repentance and to know you, Father. It'll change everything. He'll look at life through a whole new lens. And it'll bring a miracle to that family, Lord, and for those babies. We thank you, Lord. Bless Nikki, John Ryan, Lord, Brother Francisco, and the Philippines, Lord. Continue to just reveal your word to him. Through the bloody gospel of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, continue to sanctify and deliver him from all of his, all of his struggles. Sanctify, do that work in his life. Seal him with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray. Father, the, the, the followers that are through Brazil, Lord, different ones, Lord, I'm not good with the names because the names are, I'll mess them up, but I know who you are, and I appreciate you. You know, Sister Esther, your mother is dear, very dear to me. She's been a very dear uh, follower of the ministry, and the things that she has shared, the things that God has spoke to her to me have been truly a blessing. Bless those fam that family, Lord. Continue to work in their lives, Father God, I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray for Brother Chris. We talk a lot. <laughs> Father, just continue to strengthen him. Help him keep his eyes, not on Rome, but on the one who's with him. The angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, who walks next to him. Shake that weariness off him. And may he not be in fear. Because Jezebel, in the end, is fed to the dogs. Lord Jesus Christ, anybody else we've forgotten? Obviously, my, my children continue. We thank you tonight. We met at, we've, we've had two weeks in a row, uh, three now, Bible study Wednesday night. My cousin texts me tonight. God's, oh, Lord, you're doing something, Lord. She said, Paul, I watched your, your 3 a.m. warning message. She said, man, i got to come hear you preach. And she said, I've been having dreams and so forth. And she said, I keep having this reoccurring dream that time is running out. She'll be there next Wednesday at Bible study. Father, I pray for Tommy. Lord Jesus. Lord, I want to say thank you, Lord, that you're working through Trish and John. And Brother Tommy, Jesus loves you. His blood, he shed his blood on the cross for you, my, my dear brother. May you continue to just feed upon the word. Your sins are washed away as you repent, as you confess them to him. It's all washed away through the blood of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That's our protection as the storms are raging around us. There's death on every corner. Fear. Plagues. The beast is in full, full, full capacity working, going forth till eventually he'll become incarnated, but oh Lord, the bride will be gone. So Lord Jesus, we have, we have that message to hold on to that it's the blood. It's the, it's the power of the blood of Christ that works in our lives, Lord. And may that blood, that precious grace of God continue to touch Tommy and speak to him and reveal your word to my brother. You are loved by the Lord. He loves you, my, my brother. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God. Bless us now as we dig into the word because, Father God, we want to expose the enemy. I've watched the great deception in my, in my country. Not only in my country, Lord, but in this world. They think, they think something great of this man named Trump. But Lord Jesus Christ, may the word of God expose the enemy. Because that's what this ministry was called to do. 
We have no fear because we have our eyes on the angel of the Lord. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, praise his holy name. August 24th, 2019. You guys can look it up on YouTube. Look up August August 20, 21st. It's, it's no coincidence. It was twice he's done this on August 21st, 2019, 2021. This guy named Trump. Trump looks, looks up at the sky in 2019 while he's talking to uh, reporters. And he looks up and he's talking and all of a sudden he just looks up and he says, I am the chosen one. Okay? Just recently, August 21st and 21st and 2021, Trump, there's a Trump rally being held. I've never in my life seen ever. Have, and you all know what I'm talking about. Have you ever seen in your life when a president continues to hold rallies after he's out of office? Never seen it. Never seen it. A statement made the second by, by a guy named Senator, Alabama Senator Mo Books, Brooks, Books or Brooks, declaring the second coming of Donald Trump. At the very same time as we as believers are looking for the second coming of Jesus Christ, there's blasphemy being spoken as a second coming of Donald Trump. Now, 21. I, have a, I, have a, I love this little website I use. It. You look it up, it gives numbers, and as Tr Sister Trish, you use it yourself too. 21. What's the meaning of 21? All this stuff, folks, God is in numbers. Nothing, nothing happens for no reason. There's, it's, no, it's no coincidence there's, there's a guy named Trump that's going on, all this stuff taking place right at the time when we as a believers are looking. We are, we are the rapture, the Trump, the Trump shall, sign, shall, shall sound and the, and the dead in Christ rise and the rapture. So it's no coincidence that these things are going on right at the same time. Now, 21 symbolizes the great wickedness of rebellion and sin. Okay, now there's a term. Let me take a drink here. This is what hit me the other night. There's two extremes, okay? But there's only one truth. There's only one way. You got the we call it the left, right? I I I, I, don't, I to me politics mean nothing to me. But you have the left, right? You have the left who says wear your mask, get your jab. Get your booster, keep your distance, blah, 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 blah. Live in fear, right? You have the right. And this is what bothers me because the left narrative, I've hit on that before. I preached a message called Mask and the Spirit Behind It. My very first sermon that I preached ties right into the blood. It's called the God's Only Provided Place of Protection. I preached my first message sitting over there. My hair was about as long as a monkey. It felt like, you know, I had pandemic and I had a chance. I was just going to get a haircut, and, but I had you know, long hair. Well, not long, but, you know, to me it was long enough. I couldn't stand it. But if you go back and look, that's the first message I preached. And God gave me that the only provided place of protection is having the Holy Ghost. Life is in the blood, the Holy Spirit. Now, the left, the narrative is fear, 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 right? And, and we've seen that overboard but you look at the right narrative you got the trump narrative that keeps saying things like fake news fake news fake news fake news fake news right causing a deception causing a deception as basically a spirit of rebellion and sin right that that's that's telling people because i see it all the time i check out youtube channels who are i, I look at things I, i'm always watching what's going on with these with these with these covid variants these uh, i'm very watchful of plagues there's one that just hit. My phone's over there. Yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll talk to y'all eventually. <laughs> um, anyways, just it's look up look up India. It's 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 gone on before there, but recently it it, it just hit again, and it, a 12 year old died quickly, and he was around hundreds of people, and they are panicking over there, like they're afraid this thing is, and the death rate is 23 to 40 percent death rate. It's called N. I N V U or something. I can't remember, folks. Um, I'll, I'll grab it. I'll tell you what. I, I feel. I'll hold on a second here. Okay. Yeah. 
if you all want to look it up, it is called, um, let's see here. Nope. Hold on, let me just pull up my YouTube channel. It's somewhere in my history. Library history. Okay, here it is. Okay, N-I-P-A-H virus in Kerala. High alert after a 12-year-old dies. That's one, one or two days ago. Okay. So I am always trying to be alert because, folks, the left says live in fear, mask up, vaccinate, evil, jabs. The right got Trump over here telling you fake news, fake news, fake news, and all this other stuff. You know, you, you see that what I, you can see what I'm seeing. Here's my concern. Here's my concern is that those, those all those Trump followers are just are just laughing at it. They're downplaying the judgment of God. The prophet of God, Brother Banham. And I'll show you guys and you guys can. Uh, You know, we're family on here. We're, you know, we, those who follow this channel, you're my brothers and sisters, and I love you all. And all the rest of you, and all the trolls, you can keep on trolling and being judged by this ministry. Let me find it here. I feel led to share this, so I'm just going to look it up. There it is. You get a chance... That in the last days, that there'll be a germ warfare. That diseases will break out upon the people and will fall on everyone without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But was the angel who had charge over these plagues was given orders to touch no one on whom the mark was. Well, how much kind of teachers have we got to be, brethren, to get the church in order to be in that condition? Immune. My arms are sore now from where the doctors has punched needles in to try to inoculate me from yellow fever and so forth. I told them I didn't need it, but they wouldn't listen to me. But I tell you what God's going to do. God's got a serum, and it's called the Holy Ghost. And when that serum goes in, it'll inoculate you. In the last days, I remember one time during the 37 flood, everybody had to take typhoid shots. And so I was escaping mine. I was a lineman, so I was out and gone. Some fellow walked up to me and said, have you got your shots yet? I said, oh, yes. I got my shot. He said, uh, you did? He said, did it make you sick? I said, oh, no. <laughs> I said, no, it sure didn't. He said, when did you get your shot? I said, oh, about three years ago. Three years? He said, well, you ought to take another. And I said, I get one about every hour. <laughs> All right. I was just going on to him. But look, friend, the time is coming that when there is rising up a church, if we can't have faith for divine healing, how are we going to have faith for the rapture?
Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, I hope you could hear that. Um, you know, what my point is is this, and this is what's burning me up right now. Okay, this Trump deception, right? This, this, this you got, you got this other side of here because it's all, it's all Satan. Satan is, Satan's behind all of this. The left, the right. There's only one answer, folks. There's only one answer. That's Jesus Christ. That, that that's receiving the Holy Ghost, the blood that the blood of Christ, which which produces the life, the change, the the the, the born again experience, but the being born again by the Word of God. That we, as we receive the Holy Ghost, that is our only place of protection. That's it. These storms are they're, they're raging all around us, folks. But this Trump deception is fake news, fake news, fake news. So I see so many people that are just commenting on, like you, when you see what's going on, the plagues. These plagues are happening, folks. These plagues are real. They're God's judgment. The very prophet talked about it. Germ warfare. These things would take place. It would be happening right at the end time. But only those who got the Holy Ghost are protected by it. Are protected from it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I'm on that ship. There's waves flying everywhere. And I'm bringing the bloody gospel of Jesus Christ. And your only place of protection. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Oh, Lord God, have mercy. Amen. Now, fake news, which has caused so many, so many to not see the judgments of God. That's what's going on right now. People are going back to what they call their new, their kind of, they're, they're so-called new normal. And they just keep saying things like, oh, this is just political. Oh, this was just about getting Trump out of office. Oh, this is political, political, political. Okay. That spirit of Trump has taught you that. That spirit, that, that, that satanic spirit, that, that spirit of pride, that spirit of Enoch. That we're going to show you something here in the Word of God. I'm not sorry, Enoch. Esau. We are, we are studying Enoch tonight, a Bible study. Esau. Coming right through that man's life. Now, Genesis 25, verse 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now, and Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the 